Hi there! So I haven't been posting many videos up in the past few weeks because I've been taking videos of the last streetcar to run on the Tokyo streetcar system which was which is mostly abolished back in the 1960s. And the last streetcar, the Type 7000, was taken out of service last Saturday. So building up to that event, I've been actually taking videos of, of the Type 7000 and basically haven't had time to do any electronics and other videos that you've seen on this channel. So today I'm back with a little find I had at at Daiso, which is basically what is called a 100 yen store in Japan. It's similar to like a dollar store or a pound store that you might see in the US or UK. Basically they have things that are really cheap and some things that are really good value for their money. So this is a mobile battery, which is basically just a USB power bank. They call it a mobile battery in Japan actually. And this doesn't happen to be 100 yen, but, actually, but it's actually 300 yen. So that comes out to be a little less than $3. But it's an actual complete USB power bank with a little USB cable that comes with it. So it claims they can charge an iPhone 5 in about three and a half hours. And actually that's written in English as well, which is kind of nice. And uh, it has a capacity of 2000 milliamp hours, which is kind of surprising for the price of 300 yen, so I'm just going to suspect this is a little lower than what they actually claim it to be. And I guess I'll take a look at the back side and see what they have. Um, let's see. So it's a 2000 milliamp hour battery, and it says that the maximum input is 5 volts DC, 1000 milliamp hour current, and the maximum output is the same at 5 volts, 1000 milliamp current. And I guess that's all written in English as well. I didn't really have to translate that. And one of the big no-nos that they say is that do not charge um, like a smartphone and ch charge the power bank at the same time. And as you can see, it's one of these regular power, power banks where you would charge through the micro USB port and you would be able to get the output out of the regular USB type A port. And there's some warnings and such written in English and probably Spanish as well. And as you would expect, this is made in China. Let's go ahead and open the package up and see what we have inside. So first of all, we already have this discolored cellophane tape, which is sometimes the kind of stuff you end up with when you go to these dollar stores. But then again, it's really cheap, so you can't expect too much, right? Alright, take the cover off, just a little piece of cardboard, and we have the power bank itself, some, I believe, instructions. Yep, it looks like some instructions in Japanese, and Japanese only, okay. And we have a USB power cable as well. Whoops. So... Basically, the power bank is what appears to be. Oh, that's kind of. What's that? A little piece of plastic coming out. That's not nice. That's a testament to the quality of the product. Anyway, it kind of looks like it's just a holder for a common 18650 size rechargeable lithium battery. And as you can see, here's the two ports. Oh, upside down. The out, it says, is a 5 volt, obviously, and in is 5 volt as well. It really doesn't have any current ratings on here. And yeah, that's about it, I guess. All right, so let's take a closer look at this. All right, so first let's try connecting up this USB power checker and see how much voltage is coming out of this power bank. So first of all, just do that. And... Right, so we have 5.03 volts coming out of this power bank. And one of the things I've noticed in connecting this power bank was that every once in a while you'll see that the the power checker just flashes like that. And when it flashes, you'll notice that the voltage goes down to zero volts. So that's kind of odd. So I went ahead and connected up a few things and just to try this out, I noticed a few interesting things. So first of all, let's try connecting up a one of these made in China power draw things. So first let's do that. So go ahead and connect this up. 
and it's going to get really hot. So this thing on the right is selectable between 1 amp and 2 amp using this little switch. And you can see from the output of the power checker, it says that the little thing on the right is pulling 0 0.9 amps. So it's not quite the 1 amp that it's claiming to be, but at least it's pulling that much power. And you notice that there's a light that lit up inside the power bank, probably to mean that whatever is on the uh, downstream is actually pulling power. Also, another thing is that the voltage has dropped quite a bit. So I guess this power bank isn't very, very effective at getting high output or being able to sustain a high voltage when there's a lot of power being drawn. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this because it gets really hot. So I've gone ahead and removed that little green thing that pulls a lot of power and just burns it off and heats itself up. So while that green thing was plugged in and was pulling lots of current, you notice that this flashing thing was not happening at that time. Now next, what I'm gonna try doing is just hook up a little LED to this with a boost converter and try it with something that has a little bit less current draw. This is gonna be a little bit more interesting. Okay, so please excuse the crudity of this setup, but what I ended up doing was basically I have a little USB cable that's been chopped off so that I can connect these little alligator clips onto this boost converter. Basically I have this boost converter set so I get about 12 volts of output and I've got it connected to this, well I believe it was claiming a 10 watt LED, but basically it doesn't pull that much power. But anyway, there's an quote unquote high power LED over here. So we'll go ahead and plug in this USB cable into this power bank and see what happens. Go ahead and do that. The LED lights up and the power bank is making a little bit of humming noise, but aside from that, you just saw that. It's doing that same flashing thing every few seconds. And just wait for it and see. Again, you notice that the power checker and the LED both went off at the same time, like, oh, it's not doing it now. Okay, okay, there it goes. So it seems intermittent, but it goes on and off every once in a while. And you can see how much power draw it's doing. It's not very stable, but it's pulling probably somewhere between 0 0.3 amps and maybe 0 0.4 amps or so. So I've gone ahead and done some additional research of this USB power bank, and it turns out there are quite a few people out there who have already taken a look inside by prying this open and such. And the information I found was that the chip being used inside to perform the, the charging and discharging of the battery is using a chip called HT4928S, which is made by a company called Hot Chip. And apparently that operates in a way such that every two seconds, the output is stopped for about two milliseconds and it determines whether the voltage is above a certain level to see if it should be in the discharge mode or be in a charge mode. And according to data sheets that have been referenced by the page I'm looking at, which I'll include a link to, but it's gonna be in Japanese, apparently it goes down to about 4.7 volts, but from actual measurements, people have noticed that it goes down to two volts, which kind of explains why we get this behavior, where every couple of seconds, the power checker blanks out like that, yeah. And apparently if the chip can detect a load on the power bank, this behavior where it, where it drops up the voltage like that does not happen anymore, which it kind of explains when we plugged in that resistor that was pulling one amp, we did not see that behavior where the power cuts out. So basically what we can say about this power bank is that as long as you're using it in the way that the power bank is expecting it to be used, you're probably not gonna have any problems. But if you're using it in ways it doesn't expect it, such as connecting it to loads that pull less current than it expects, it will be continuously doing this cycling where every couple of seconds, it tries to check whether it should be in discharge mode or charge mode. But that also tells us that this would be a pretty poor power source to be using for something like a Raspberry Pi because every couple of seconds, the Pi is gonna lose power. That would be a bad thing. So it turns out that connecting the power bank directly to a smartphone, this is an Android phone as you can see, it seems like it works just fine. The power bank itself doesn't make any strange noises and we'll, we can see that 
It's not exhibiting that behavior where it shuts off every few seconds. And the blue light is on to indicate that it is charging the phone. So yeah, when I was using this little boost converter in order to power up th these LEDs, it, things weren't going really well, so it might be the case that the boost converter wasn't doing a really good job pulling clean current from the power bank, and that might have been causing some of the issues where we were seeing quite a bit of current was being pulled, but the power bank didn't seem to understand that there was actually current being pulled on the downstream. But then again, we are pulling a lot more current than we were seeing before. All right, so we got a pretty good idea of what this USB power bank is like. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and take a look inside this very cheap USB power bank and see what kind of parts are actually in there and maybe look at the build quality and such. All right, so if you enjoyed watching this video, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, please leave it in the comments section. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. As always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.